Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Dr. Mirinveer Singh, an emergency medicine specialist here in the UK and today we're going to be looking at Grey's Anatomy. We're going to be looking at the episode where Dr. DeLuca suffers some severe trauma, so let's get into it. He's in the back of an ambulance. They're doing well because they've got oxygen attached. He's got blood around his face and his neck, so he's obviously involved in some kind of trauma. They've got the correct equipment and monitoring for blood pressure, the ECG and oxygen. So what he's saying there, B positive, he's telling the paramedics what his blood type is. That's so important because when you need blood, it needs to be specific to your blood type. The further detail of the blood is known as cross-matching when we give you blood. So it's important because if you need blood, it takes 10 minutes to do a group and a save, but to actually do a cross-match, which means to give you very specific blood for yourself, that can take up to 40 minutes. Obviously, in an emergency, we're gonna be giving you O negative blood. Okay, so here we've got the trauma team outside of the hospital. This is what we do when we are preparing for a cardiac arrest or a trauma patient to come into hospital. We get all the different teams and the specialities ready so that we can do a full A to E assessment of the patient and provide the best care. It looks like that they don't know who's coming in, so this will be quite a surprise. So right there, you can see all the different pads, all the different gores that have been applied. He's been stabbed in the chest or the abdomen. We have quite a lot of organs in this area and those organs especially are very delicate to life. Also, they contain a, a huge amount of blood so therefore if there's an injury through a piercing object it can be catastrophic and can lead to death within just a few minutes you have structures such as the heart the lungs the aorta you have the spleen you have the pancreas you have the stomach you have the bowel any one of these organs and damage to those organs can lead to severe complications so it looks like DeLuca is in quite severe trouble so what they've just poured onto his body there is iodine. This disinfects the skin to get rid of any kind of bugs which could cause contamination. It basically makes the area sterile. But normally you wouldn't just splash it onto that. You'd use specific gauze held on with equipment that you can paint around the rest of the abdomen and the chest so that you can be very specific and direct in terms of where you apply it. That way you can then rub the skin so that way it ensures that it is clean. So when you have a trauma patient, you can get certain types of scans like x-rays and CTs done very rapidly and that allows you to get to a diagnosis very quickly and so if I just take it back to the x-ray that can be seen there the left side of the thorax the left lung you can see there's a complete whiteout this means there's a significant amount of fluid in this case because it's a trauma it means there's going to be a significant amount of blood in the chest this can be catastrophic this blood needs to be taken out so therefore we would be putting a chest tube which is about the size of my thumb and larger that would go through the chest wall into the space where the lungs would be. This then would extract the fluid out allowing us to decompress the lung, allowing the lung to expand so that he can breathe but then secondly also allow us to monitor the amount of blood that comes out because if there's a certain amount of blood that comes out in a certain amount of time then we have to clamp it to prevent significant blood loss. Cardium and just nick the ventricle. So they've said the knife has gone through the pericardium and nicked the ventricle. The pericardium is the sac that surrounds the heart. Blood can fill up around there and it compresses the heart. By compressing the heart, it means the heart can no longer act like a pump, meaning that no blood can be pumped around to the rest of the body to supply the organs such as the brain, the heart, the kidneys and the rest of the body. This is very dangerous and the fluid needs to be taken out. This is known as creating a pericardial window where a tube known as a catheter is placed so that the fluid can be drained. And a nick in the ventricle is a laceration, is a cut to the ventricle. The ventricle is one of the main chambers of the heart that helps pump blood around the rest of the body. So if there's damage to that, that needs to be repaired so that the ventricle then can go back to its normal function and pump. Dr. Hunt said it's gone through his spleen, his stomach and his diaphragm. All these structures then have to be repaired. The spleen is notoriously very difficult to repair and therefore in most cases it has to be removed. It's like a big wet sponge full of blood. Massive amounts of bleeding can occur from here. Dr. Hunt, how many units has he received so far? Six units of blood, six of FFP. Right, so he's had six units of blood and then he's also had six units of FFP. FFP is known as fresh frozen plasma. The tag to check for his clotting factor. So the reason why they want to check for his clotting factors is because when you have a severe bleed you could end up potentially having a complication when you're replacing the blood and this is known as DIC disseminated intravascular coagulopathy and therefore doing regular checks of the coagulation you are potentially able to keep an eye on this and hopefully do the right thing for the patient and make the corrections blood pressure is starting to come up right? so blood pressure is starting to come up as more blood is being given we're heading in a positive direction so here deluke is in recovery on the intensive care unit still attached to the ventilator 
So he's tachycardic and his CVP is going up. CVP stands for central venous pressure and tachycardia means a very fast heart rate. When you have a fast heart rate and your central venous pressure goes up and you've been in a trauma like DeLuca has, classically, this is going to be because fluid is again building up around the heart, causing pressure. This causes a backlog. So what they're gonna do here is open up his chest and do an emergency procedure. Because he's had cardiothoracic surgery, he's just got wires holding his sternum together. So they will cut these open. What you can see is Dr. Hunt is literally picking up clots and throwing them outside of DeLuca's body. My first guess is what we discussed earlier on, DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulopathy. And so what's happening is all the amount of blood that's been lost, the amount of blood that's been given back, and the other different factors that have been replaced has led to a massive instability within the clotting system of DeLuca. And therefore certain parts of his vessels and body are clotting and the rest of it is then bleeding. And you can see that he's bleeding from his nose, he's bleeding from his mouth. When a patient is in DIC, we are at a very serious situation. The mortality rate at this point is extremely high. Everything that Dr. Hearn and Dr. Altman are going to be doing now is essentially going to be a salvage procedure. They're going to be doing their best to resuscitate DeLuca, but in majority of cases there's a poor outcome and it unfortunately leads to death. So here they're doing internal cardiac defibrillation. His heart has stopped, they're charging paddles directly to the heart. When a patient is at this point, this essentially is end of life. And it looks like the team's now realized, but because he's their work colleague and their friend, it's very difficult for them to make that decision about calling time of death. Well guys, thank you for watching. I hope that video was informative. If you want me to do more reviews of Grey's Anatomy or other medical shows, then let me know in the comments below. Remember to like, share and subscribe. Let's grow this channel. Remember, keep safe and keep well, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.